It is so hot here in New York City. It's kind of a sauna. It's kind of gross. So I am definitely not turning on my oven right now. What I am gonna do today is share three delicious vegan instant pot recipes that are perfect for summer. You don't have to turn on your oven. They've got fresh seasonal ingredients. And for those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Nisha and I share really delicious vegan recipes. And today actually I'm gonna share with you a few recipes for my first cookbook, the Vegan Instant Pot Cookbook. This first recipe is for a couscous and lentil salad. And I'm starting by slicing up some bell peppers. I've got a yellow and a red one today, and then I'm gonna finely dice them up. Could you also use an orange one? If you've seen my channel before, you know how I feel about green bell peppers. I do not like them. Another way to slice a bell pepper is to slice off the top in a circle and detach the big stem so you get most of those seeds out right there. Bell peppers are pretty watery, so I'm going to just put them in a paper towel and dab out any excess water. I'm gonna set these aside and then I'll start chopping our other vegetables. I'm just washing the carrots and giving them a scrub. I'm not going to peel them. The peel is totally edible, so I usually don't peel it. And the last thing we're gonna chop is a yellow onion and we're gonna dice that up. And we're also going to mince up six cloves of garlic. We've got all of our ingredients prepped to add to the Instant Pot. In addition to the vegetables, I've got some French green lentils that have been soaking in cool water for two hours, some pearl couscous. Really love the texture of pearl couscous. It's so much better than regular couscous, which kind of just feels like sand to me. We've also got some vegetable broth, salt and pepper, fresh thyme and bay leaves to season. Everything is gonna go in the Instant Pot and then I'll see you guys when it's done. Make sure you've got your ceiling ring securely fastened to the lid, close it, and make sure your valve is set to the ceiling position. If you have a new model of the Instant Pot, it's a bit different. And we're gonna cook it for three minutes at high pressure. While the couscous and lentils are cooking, I'm gonna start on our salad ingredients. I've got some fresh dill here today, as well as some parsley. And this is gonna add a lot of fresh flavor to the salad. It's gonna make it taste like summer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and roughly chop this up. I've also got some olives and tomatoes that I'm going to slice up. These are Castel Vitrano olives. They are my absolute favorite. They're buttery and smooth, and they're not overly salty like some olives. Um, so I personally love them. If you're not a fan of olives, I know not everyone is, you can go ahead and omit them. I've also got some cherry tomatoes, or you could use grape tomatoes, and depending on their size, I'll have them or quarter them. The couscous and lentils are done, so I'm gonna remove the thyme sprigs as well as the bay leaves. The lentils and couscous are too hot right now to be a salad, so I'm going to transfer them to this bowl to cool down. And once they're at room temperature, we'll add all the salad ingredients. And while this mixture is cooling down, we'll go ahead and get started with our second recipe, which is for a corn chowder. The first thing I'm gonna do is shuck four large ears of corn. For the most intense, delicious corn flavor, briefly place the ears of corn over an open flame and turn occasionally until they're lightly charred. I've got some raw cashews here soaking in boiling water. They just need about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up our corn and veggies. I've got four corn cobs here that I've lightly charred, and now I'm just gonna shave the kernels off the corn. I know it sounds a little strange to be making chowder in the middle of summer when it's very hot, but it is fresh corn season and it's absolutely incredible. So. I really recommend it. Our fresh corn is shaved, so, so shaved. Our fresh corn, our fresh corn is shaved. We've got our fresh corn shaved over here, so now we're gonna chop the rest of our vegetables. And I'm gonna start with two Yukon Gold potatoes. These ones are very cute and nubby. I feel bad cutting their knobs off, but we're just gonna have to do it. First, I'm gonna go ahead and peel them though. It's very easy to juggle with two items. I could do this all day. Now it's time to chop off these nubbins and dice these potatoes up. I've already got an onion that I've diced up here. I'm also gonna dice some celery and carrots, garlic, and because I like my corn chowder a little spicy, some jalapeno peppers. I think corn and jalapeno go really well together. All of our ingredients are prepped, so now it's time to start cooking. I've got the Instant Pot on the saute setting. It's got some olive oil in there heating up, and now I'm going to add the diced onion and saute until translucent. Stir the onions occasionally, and after four to five minutes, add the diced jalapeno peppers and minced garlic. Saute for one minute, stirring frequently to prevent sticking, and then add the diced carrot and celery along with a pinch of salt and pepper. 
After two minutes, add the chopped potatoes and cook for two minutes, again tossing frequently to prevent sticking. The veggies have been sauteed, so I turned off the saute setting. So I've got some vegetable broth here. I'm using two cups to start, and usually when I'm done with the soup, I will add a little bit more depending on how thick it is. Now I've got the charred corn kernels. I'm actually gonna reserve just a couple tablespoons, and that will be a nice little garnish for the top. Got our soaked and drained cashews, some kosher salt, got two bay leaves, and I've got some smoked paprika and cumin, some black pep. My secret ingredient is celery salt. Celery salt is really common in kind of like New England cuisine. I think it does really well in chowder, so I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of that. And finally, for some extra richness and creaminess, because this is a chowder, I'm gonna add some canned coconut milk. Give everything a stir, and then we'll go ahead and pressure cook it at high pressure for six minutes. While the corn chowder is coming to pressure, I'm going to finish our first dish, the couscous and lentil salad. It's come to room temperature now, so I'm gonna add the salad ingredients. And I don't like to add it when it's still warm because it doesn't feel as much like a salad. Extra virgin olive oil. It's kind of like a simple vinaigrette with red wine vinegar. I'm using slightly less than the recipe calls for because while we were filming, Max ate a decent amount of this salad. So I don't need quite as much as the recipe calls for. And we're also gonna add the tomatoes, olives, dill, and parsley that we chopped earlier. And the final step is just season to taste with salt and pepper. And then it'll be time for lunch. It's got a really nice fresh brightness from the dill and the parsley. A nice tanginess from the red wine vinegar, a little bit of a salty bite from the olives. It would be the perfect salad to take to a picnic or a barbecue or just like sitting outside with a glass of rosé, which is what I wish I was doing right now. But I'm just gonna make myself a little bowl, wait for that corn chowder to be done, and I'll check in with you guys then. I allowed a natural pressure release for five minutes for the corn chowder, and then I switched the valve over to do a manual release. I'm gonna squeeze in some fresh lime juice, this is gonna bring a nice fresh punch to the soup, balance all the flavors. And now it's time to blend up our soup. There are two options for doing this. You can use an immersion blender or a stand blender. With the immersion blender method, you're gonna get a soup that's a bit rustic. It's gonna be a little bit chunky. So if you prefer a smoother, silkier soup, go ahead and use a stand blender. Oh my goodness, that is so good. This is the best of fresh corn. Corn, lime, jalapeno, they go so well together. It is a very thick and creamy soup, so if you prefer it a little thinned out, you could add more vegetable broth at this point, but I like mine really thick and creamy, so I'm gonna leave it as is. We had a really nice lunch, that very creamy corn chowder and the lentil and couscous salad. Now it's time to move on to my favorite part of every meal, dessert. This is a variation of recipe in my cookbook. The recipe in my cookbook is for a peach raspberry crisp, but today I'm going to make a nectarine blueberry crisp. I love this recipe because you get to enjoy the quintessential summer fruit crisp without making your kitchen hot. We'll cook the nectarine blueberry filling in the instant pot. It just takes a minute. And then we'll do the crisp topping. It's kind of a deconstructed crisp topping. We'll do that on the stove and it takes just five to seven minutes. For this recipe, you wanna use nectarines that are slightly firm, not as ripe as you would if you were just eating them because they're gonna get really soft and break down in the Instant Pot. So we're just gonna add all of these ingredients to the Instant Pot. I've lightly greased the bottom of the pot with some coconut oil so it doesn't stick. I've got about six cups of nectarines here and I'm adding about two cups or one pint of blueberries. I'm gonna add a little bit of sweetness, We've got some organic cane sugar and organic brown sugar. If you don't have both, you could use just one of them. A little bit of sea salt to balance the sweetness, just a pinch. For some extra flavors, we're gonna add some ground cinnamon, ginger, and cardamom, and a little bit of lemon juice, about a teaspoon. And finally, some almond extract. I really like almond extract with stone fruits like nectarines and peaches, but if you don't have it, you can use vanilla. Now very gently stir to combine, so the fruit and the spices and the sugar get coated, and then we'll pressure cook this for one minute at high pressure. While the nectarine filling is cooking in the Instant Pot, we're gonna make our deconstructed crisp topping. So heat up some coconut oil in a large skillet over medium heat, and once it's melted, add some rolled oats, brown sugar, pecans, salt, cinnamon, and almond flour. Spread out the mixture and toss frequently to prevent it from burning until it's toasted and lightly brown about five to seven minutes. 
Our crisp topping is nice and golden and toasty, so we're gonna transfer it to our parchment lined sheet. In the meantime, while it cools down a little bit, I'll go finish the filling. Once the one minute timer is done on the Instant Pot, perform a quick pressure release and stir in a slurry made of water and arrowroot powder or cornstarch. Bring it to a boil on the saute setting until the filling is jammy and has thickened. It smells so good. If you don't want too much liquid in yours, you can use a slotted spoon like I'm doing now. And then we'll just serve some of the crisp topping directly on top. You could put them in like cute little dessert bowls or glasses. I'm adding a little bit of vegan whip topping and a final dusting of cinnamon. And now it's time to eat. If you're looking for even more creative vegan summer recipes, I put together a short little playlist for you to watch right here. Spicy and jalapeno and corns go. Jalapeno and corns go. I have a sneeze coming. Maybe it's not coming. I've already got an onion diced up here. Diced up here. Onion diced up here. Diced up here. Mm -hmm. 